Welcome to another edition of Making Rounds at Boca Regional. I'm your host, Tom Chikurta, and I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Martin Klusterman, who's Chief of Cardiology here at the hospital. Dr. Klusterman, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tom, for having us. What we're going to be talking about is pretty uh, an exciting new development related to uh, implantable cardiac devices, and which we believe is really advancing how those devices are monitored. But I'd like to talk a little bit about your specialty, what you do, and the incidence of people in this country that have implantable cardiac devices. My field of specialty in cardiology is called electrophysiology. And to put it in simple terms, we are the electricians of the heart. And as such, we treat uh, different problems of the heart rhythm, some of them life-threatening in nature. Patients that uh, have situations where their heart is at risk of developing a life-threatening arrhythmia, many times are provided with an implantable defibrillators. Others that have uh, dif difficulties with their heart rhythm in terms of being too slow get a pacemaker. Mm -hmm. Electrical disorders of the heart are more prevalent uh, with age as things change as we grow older, so as the electrical system of the heart. And that is why in our area in South Florida, uh, this is a relatively common situation of patients having devices, cardiac devices. Now, once the device, whether it's a pacemaker or a defibrillator, is implanted in the patient, it's not a one and done kind of thing. There is a routine uh, process of monitoring these devices to get data on the heart's function. And then sometimes there's emergent situations where that data needs to be analyzed too, correct? Exactly. And that is a very important concept because patients uh, with other things that are implanted in the body uh, are used to a done deal. You get a stent and that opens the artery and you're done with it. Exactly. You get a knee. Uh, that does the job and you're done with it. But a cardiac device has a very dynamic relationship, not only with the heart itself, but with the different conditions. And there are different things that can be adjusted uh, about how the device works, not necessarily out of a malfunction, but as tailoring it to the patient's needs. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, what did that process entail to to monitor the device and the data coming from it. There is a dedicated computer called Programmer, which is what we use to interact with that device. That computer is able to connect through the skin with the device, and we are able to not only interrogate the device about events that might have happened, uh, arrhythmias that might have happened, but also these devices today are provided with a set of sensors for different cardiovascular conditions where we can get information from. Therefore, there is the need of this computer and actually expertise in the one that is handling it, whether if it's the company technician or the physician itself, which is specialized in dealing with this, to uh, be able to interact with the device and obtain the information and eventually do changes if they're needed. Mm -hmm. Now, prior to the advent of the technology, which we'll be discussing shortly, that monitoring process required someone actually being called and coming to the facility or to the patient's bedside, correct? Exactly. So the standard way of doing this is the, uh, about having a company representative of that particular device make to come in the hospital uh, with the programmer at hand and do the checks that needs to be done. Uh, not all the areas where the patients may reach in the hospital, uh, being the emergency room, being the OR, or even the clinical floor, will have a readily availability of these programmers and, again, an, a, a person with the expertise to handling them. So that process, whether it be the technician coming to the institution or being in a location where you had access to the technology, that could contribute to a fairly lengthy process, correct? Exactly, and that brings us to one of our main issues with today's de delivery of health care, and that is the issue of time. And therefore, being able to interrogate and know what's going on with the patient in a timely fashion becomes crucial, not only in the best interest of the patient, but also 
for a hospital operations. Sure, the management of patient flow, the efficiency of the processes, correct? Exactly. Well, let's get to the exciting part. So we've, we've kind of talked about the, call it the old-fashioned way, but uh, you and your colleagues are now using a, a new device that allows you uh, to garner information uh, in a, from a remote capacity. Could you explain to our viewers the advances uh, that we're now seeing here at Boca Regional on our patients with implantable devices? Sure. I'll preface that by saying that i always been very interested uh, as a personal um, uh, development uh, in terms of uh, device interaction and uh, uh, pioneering uh, the remote uh, monitoring and managing of these devices. Uh, that uh, initial work that we have done here at Boca Regional have translate uh, years later uh, into uh, the uh, company's world and into a matter of scale. Mm -hmm. So what we could do here in, at, a, at a limited level now it has become more of a, a scale level. Uh, so uh, there is a device company, um, namely Medtronic, oh, right. that uh, has come up with this uh, simpler concept about checking the device, providing an instrument that is meant to help as a liaison uh, remotely between the patient, whatever is located, and uh, the actual uh, place where the data is gathered. So uh, is, if you will, a communicator. Mm -hmm. So we talked before about a programmer, and this will be a communicator. So uh, that has only one button, and uh, it's more readily available than programmers. So we furnish the hospital in all of their main areas with these communicators. And therefore, if at any given time, a patient that has a Medtronic device were to need its device. This could be in the emergency room, at the bedside, up on a unit, whatever the situation In the was. OR, mm -hmm. prior to MRIs, Procedure, yes. yes. A anywhere in this hospital, mm -hmm. uh, we can interrogate and uh, make disposition of these devices within a 15-minute time frame. As compared to what, what I understand, it could be 60 minutes to 80 minutes for the travel time, for the, the technician, so th this dramatically reduces the time of the study, doesn't it? Yes, not only dramatically reduce the time, but also add consistency and reliability. You know no matter what, no matter when, we always take 15 minutes or less to have this device check. And that uh, it's very important in order to then define further planning with things. Now the other interesting thing, and I've, I've seen this uh, in action with Dr. Klusterman, but a nurse can actually just simply go to the bedside. The device looks almost like a little computer mouse, which is affixed to the patient's chest over the, the device. And the data is downloaded in a matter of minutes, right? Exactly. And the data, when you say it's downloaded, the data is downloaded in two ways. First is transmitted in a fax fashion uh, and uh, a hard copy is put directly into the chart and then is also emailed to the physician involved in the case and also to the company's technician. So that same information is rarely shared by all parties interested in what's going on. And I also understand that it's imported into the patient's electronic medical record as well, exactly. which is another benefit. So, you know, clearly from a speed standpoint, um, this, is, this is highly beneficial to you as a clinician. And I'm probably assuming to a patient, um, it's much more efficient. So this has to be a great patient satisfier as well compared to traditional methods. Yes. Uh, sometimes patients are not completely aware of all what is being done for them. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot that may be, uh, be left on the shuffle of a hospital admission because there's a lot of things thrown to a patient during that period of time. What they can rest assured is that on, with respect to their device manage and handling, uh, they will be taken care of uh, in a very timely and dependable manner. Lastly, um, this device is applicable to Medtronic uh, implantable devices, but I understand that you're 
working to take this to the next horizon where uh, the technology can be used uh, across a spectrum of companies in, in implantable devices. Why, and I, you, I think you were just recently published in a journal about your work in developing that. Could you talk to, uh, tell us a little bit about that? Yes, at Boca Regional we have done some pioneer work regarding interacting not only with one company device but with all companies' devices and uh, we're able to uh, obtain uh, online the information. That means uh, in real time, uh, um, without any particular delay, uh, we can access the information via an iPad or an iPhone. Uh, in the more structured way of how medicine evolves, uh, the different companies will eventually get to uh, get into the market with, with similar applications to that of Medtronic. But uh, there is uh, baby steps to this, sure. not just only uh, regarding the technology itself, which is rarely existent, mm -hmm. but mainly to the regulatory aspect of things and how uh, that can be managed in terms of patient's data information, uh, as well as a service model that has to be changed and being updated, meaning real-time handling of information requires a structure that we are not set up to rarely use at this right. time. Well, I, I hope you uh, will come away with a, a better sense of the uh, advances in technology that are occurring here at Boca Regional, especially in the field of cardiology and uh, cardiothoracic medicine. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Klusterman for joining me today. I'd like to thank you for uh, uh, tuning in and, and learning more about how Boca Regional really is advancing the boundary of medicine. Thanks for being with us.